Hello, welcome to the most exciting video to go up on my channel so far this year. If you are new here, you might not know, but I'm kind of obsessed with the women's prize at this point. It's my football, it's my Eurovision, and I really wanna know what's in this box. <laughs> So if you don't know about the Women's Prize, it's a prize for, uh, well, let, let me quote, it honours outstanding, ambitious, original fiction written in English by women from anywhere in the world. In 2021, I read the whole of the long list, 16 books, and I almost correctly predicted the short list. In 2022, I tried some of the books and I didn't get on with them, but then it backfired on me because to be honest, I had one of the most meh reading years of my adult life. So the only way to rectify that is to attempt to read them all again. The Women's Prize swore me to secrecy and sent me the long list books early. By the time you watch this video, they'll all be out there for all to see. So this is gonna be your rundown of everything that is on the long list. However, I'm on a time limit here and 14 out of the 16 books have shown up and I've already spent one night in a house near them, not looking in the box and honestly, it's killing me. I can't sleep next to this thing again. So I'm gonna unbox these 14 and then I'll update you when the nice postman brings me the extra too, okay? Okay. Now book prices bring out my inner betting goblin. So I have to say that I have predicted what is in this box already. Those books are on the screen right now, but I know I'm destined to fail because honestly, what I love about the Women's Prize is it introduces me to books I haven't heard anything about at all. I've only read three of these books and out of the 16 predicted books, I'd say the one that I'm dead certain about is the Magni O'Farrell marriage plot. It's just, it's gotta be, I can almost smell it through the cardboard. I'd say the one I'm most scared to see in this box is Tomorrow, Tomorrow, Tomorrow. I read an early proof of this very well-loved, rigorously praised book, and I don't really feel like sharing my thoughts about it on the internet because you're not gonna like it. And then the one that I really, really want to see in this box is Sea of Tranquility by Emily St. John Mandel of Station Eleven fame. I really think that book deserves to be in this freaking box. The one I'm crossing my fingers for is of course Avari McFarlane. She is forever forgotten from the Women's Prize, even though she is this generation's <laughs> Nora Ephron. And honestly, if I see a Taylor Jenkins Reid book in here and Vyron McFarlane isn't next to her. I'm about to start throwing stuff. Anyway, look, I've waited long enough. You've waited long enough. Let's find out what's in this box. <sighs> Am I gonna be right? Am I telepathic? I'm, I'm, maybe I'm a psychic or maybe I'm a woman who needs to get out more. Okay. I'm not gonna look in the box. I'm just gonna pull each one out separately. Okay. Ooh, it's shiny and it's slim. We like that. Ooh. Okay, so the first one is Cursed Bread by Sophie McIntosh. I remember her from The Water Cure. I didn't read it, but I thought about reading it. I've heard next to nothing about this book, so this is interesting, but I know that she's been uh, long listed, yeah, long listed for the Man Booker before, and she is like a well-respected writer. Edie is a baker's wife, a plain, unremarkable person, largely ignored by her husband, but she burns with the secret desire to be extraordinary. I don't really have any strong feelings about this book yet, I don't think, but under 200 pages makes me feel positive. Okay, first book. Okay, what's next? Oh, there's a thick one. Oh, okay. It's a camper van book. Oh, I don't know if I've got good feelings about this. It's called The Dog of the North by Elizabeth Mackenzie. Great end papers, so there's that. But it seems to be an eat, pray, love, uh, like, Woman has lost everything. How will she rebuild her life? In a camper van with yellow gingham curtains and pinata clunky brakes and difficult steering. Mm. First shallow, probably wrong impressions alone, but I do feel like this is the literary embodiment of gingham curtains and I, uh, okay, okay, okay. Next one. Ooh, a paperback. Ooh, no. <laughs> I was just reading the blurb. Okay, this book is called Pod by Laline Paul. Um, and I was just reading the blurb, trying to work out what was going on. And this is fully from the perspective of a dolphin. It is, isn't it? Ian has always felt like an outsider. Suffering from a type of deafness, she cannot master the rituals that unite her pod of spinner dolphins. It's different. YA with no legs and a tail. Um, okay. <laughs> Okay, I'm, I'm open, I'm open. It's made it on this list, although it is doing one of my pet hates, which is in lieu of communicating things effectively with the visuals or maybe with some quotes, the publishers simply put on the front three words, family, survival, sacrifice. <laughs> Lazy, anyway, that's not the author, that's the publisher, but hate, it's one of my deepest hatreds. Look, the only way is up. 
Come on, Maggie. Where are you? Okay. Ooh, I've wanted to read this. Okay, this is Glory by No Violet Bulawayo. Some more fetching end papers. It's chunky. Glory tells the story of a country seemingly trapped in a cycle as old as time. With the return of a long lost daughter, a free, fair, incredible election, a turning tide, and even a single bullet. I've heard great things about this. I think from my memory it's set in Zimbabwe, but the blurb feels quite abstract and folklore-y, so I'm excited about that one. Who's next? Maggie. I knew you'd be in here. Oh, <gasps> I've got the independent bookshop edition as well. Look at this, beautiful, but strip her off. Now look, I'm actually a Maggie O'Farrell virgin. I've seen her speak a few times. Interrupted by the end papers, gorgeous. I've seen her speak a few times and I think she she seems absolutely freaking wonderful. And I own Hamnet and I haven't read it. So I'm so excited to finally get round to reading a Mario Faggle. A Mario Faggle? <laughs> A Maggie O'Farrell because she's a bucket list author for me. It's definitely mashed potato. I need to. I need to find out. Um, so at least I got one right. Women's prize for <laughs> Lena won. Ooh, I haven't heard of this one. Black Butterflies by Priscilla Morris. Okay, the author is from Yugoslavia and Cornwall, and this is about a artist and a teacher called Zora who is living under political unrest. I'm, I feel medium about this. I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but I really like the title, and I think that. It's a strong concept, so. Oh, a slim one. Children of Paradise by Camilla Grudova. Oh, somebody on the back claims that she is Angela Carter's natural inheritor. Oh, this sounds great. It's about a woman who works in an old cinema that has loads of characters that she gets to know, and then the owner dies and there's loads of upheaval. Sounds great. <laughs> and also under 200 pages. Holly transforms from silent drudge to rebellious insider and gradually she com becomes part of paradise. Unearthing secrets, learning its history and haunting its corridors after hours with the other rushes. <laughs> Sign me up. This is why I'm a really naughty lucky dip person. I always like feel around for which one before I lift one out. Okay, this is a thin one. Ooh, I knew it. I knew I'd see you here. <laughs> this. I've heard really great stuff about. It's called I'm a Fan by Sheena Patel. It's about cyber stalking from a woman's perspective as the stalker and it sounds experimental and weird and I'm very, very curious about it. I thought the hardback was gorgeous, kind of regret not buying it. So excited. Lovely to run into you here, Sheena. We're gonna have a great time. Well, that's exciting. Oh! This, I thought, I, I don't know that much about this book, but I had a weird feeling about it. I did almost put it on my list, which you won't believe me that I did now because hindsight is a great thing. But I did think, okay, okay, okay. I think I saw it because Emma O'Donoghue blurbed it. I think maybe that's how I've seen this before. Anyway, okay, so this is Trespasses by Louise Kennedy. It's set in Northern Ireland and it's about a woman who meets a married man in Belfast during all of the violence. And it doesn't really tell you much more from the blurb than that. So I have been meaning to read more Irish writers, so fine, I guess I'm excited. I don't love this cover, but I, I, I thought I might see you here. Okay, there's some more big ones here. What are you? Oh, I didn't think you were eligible. Oh, it's a new one. Okay, I'd seen this, but I'd seen this really like quite a while ago. So I, in my head, I didn't think it was eligible, but this is Natalie Haynes' Stone Blind, which is Medusa's story. I did think that there was gonna be some Greek mythology stuff on the list, just cause there's so much of it on the shelves right now. And I was like, one of these is gonna have to get on. So, okay, have to let you into a tiny little secret that I'm not a massive Greek mythology fan, just not for any inherent big reason. It's just not something that interests me that much, but I do think Natalie Haynes is really funny and amazing. So if I was gonna read one, it would be yours, Natalie. So this is a book told from the perspective of Medusa and I'm gonna give it a go. I'll let you know, I'll let you know. I think Natalie Haynes has been a judge before. Am I wrong? If I'm wrong, I'll put it on screen. I think I'm right. Ooh, okay. Memphis by Tara M. Stringfellow. 
These end papers are really coming out this year. There's something in the air. Oh, I hadn't heard of this before, but premise sold. This is about a woman called Joan who returns to Memphis, uh, where she hasn't visited since she was a child, and she goes back for some unknown reason and starts sketching portraits of women in her life. Her aunt, her mother, the women who come to have their hair done, the women who come to chat and gossip. I like that as a premise, that's nice. Okay, I hadn't heard of this before, but I'm excited. I like this cover. Homesick by Jennifer Croft. Oh, it's one of those covers that leaves your fingerprints on it, damn it. Um, this seems to be a coming of age novel about a girl who has a sister with a long-term illness and the complications of that. That sounds kind of interesting and I really like the cover. It's about the heartbreak of leaving childhood behind. I'll keep an open mind. I'll keep an open mind. Now, the last one in this box, but not the last one on the list. Oh, this is a great cut. Look at this cover. Okay. The Bandit Queens by Perini Shroff. What's in you? Greta is believed to have killed her vanished husband, a rumour she hasn't bothered trying to correct because a reputation like that can keep a single woman safe in rural India. When she's approached for help in ridding another wife of her abusive drunk husband, her reluctant agreement sets in motion a chain of events that will change the lives of all the women in the village. That, mm, okay. I'm, mm. I love the cover. I love the title. I quite like the premise. I'm feeling quite hopeful about this. And again, it's one that I hadn't heard of. Well, that was quite enough to be getting on with. I'll get reading straight away. And hopefully Santa brings me the next two books in the post so we can finish this video. Okay, it's a few days later and the two missing books have arrived. However, the more astute among you might have noticed that I only listed 13 books when I was pulling books out of the box. The thing is, I'm quite short. I thought I'd got to the bottom of the box. And when I finished filming, Craig walked past the box and he was like, there's still another book in there. So let me reenact what I felt when I pulled the missing book out of the box. No, oh! <laughs> not because I'm disappointed in the book, uh, more that I was just like, I can't believe I missed a book. But anyway, this is The Wandering Souls by Celine Pin. It has been praised by Ocean Vyong on the front. So that is very promising. It's about some siblings who are fleeing Vietnam and coming into Thatcher's Britain. So that sounds like, well, it sounds like a shit show to experience, but it sounds like an interesting thing to read about. I haven't read much about that before and a pretty nice foiled cover. So we can't complain. Now, the final two mystery books. Craig has checked that they're present and correct, which is why they're wrapped in this bag. But let's just pull out Let's pull out this one first. Okay, ooh, nice and yellow. Fire Rush by Jacqueline Crooks. It's a debut about love, loss, freedom, and dub reggae. Fire Rush is an electrifying state of the nation novel, an unforgettable portrait of black womanhood. So it's set in London, Bristol, and Jamaica. I'm intrigued. And then dun 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 dun, dun it's the final book. Oh, <laughs> she's chunky. Oh no, we can't. There's too many long books already in that pile. I can't be. <laughs> I knew it. Ding, ding, ding. Another one for my list. This is Damon Copperhead, not to be confused with David Copperfield. Barbara Kingsover. I can't hold it up with one hand. I don't know if I have to have read David Copperfield to get this, but what it does have on its side is that it's bloody beautiful and it's written by an author that has already been shortlisted slash won maybe the Women's Prize before. I'm pretty sure she's, mm. yeah. <laughs> says at the bottom, winner of the Women's Prize for Fiction. So that's one of the reasons she was on my list because I know she's won before. At 545 pages, I will be ambitious to get to this, but I'm going to try. That is all of the 16 books on the Women's Prize long list. What did you think? This may be a moment of madness, but I am gonna attempt to read them all again. Wish me all of the luck you can muster. As I only guessed three out of the 16 correctly, perhaps my clairvoyance isn't what it was. But here are my predictions of which ones I think I'm going to like the best. Bandit Queens, Memphis, Children of Paradise, Glory, The Marriage Portrait, and I'm a fan. I'm also gonna have to get a little bit more ripped because some of these books. <gasps> I would love to hear if any of those books sparked an interest for you and if you had to pick one which you would read in the comments below. I have got quite a bit of reading to do, so I hope you'll excuse me. Thank you so much to the Gumption Club who tipped me per video to make sure these videos keep happening. And thank you to the Women's Prize for sending me the books early. That was a bit nice. Judge, next year. I'm available, just saying. Thanks for watching, Frog Snog out.